Example number five, a shop tech earns a base pay of 17.88 per hour plus the time and a half for overtime. That is the time over 40 hours. If he works 45.5 hours during a particular week, what's the gross pay? So the total is 45.5. The 40 hours is regular. That means at time and a half, there's 5.5 overtime hours. Now the regular pay is 1788. So 40 times 1788 equals $715.20. Now for the overtime, we've got to take our 1788 and multiply that times 1.5. That's time, that's the one, and a half, that's the 0.5. So the new hourly rate is 26. 0.82. So we take the 5.5 overtime hours, we multiply it times the overtime rate, 5.5 times 26.82, and we get for overtime, it's $147.51. So the total pay will be the regular pay, 715.20, plus the overtime pay, $147.51. So that's going to be a total of $862.71. So the gross pay is $862.71. Example 6. If one tablet of calcium pantothenate contains 0.5 grams, how much is contained in three and a quarter tablets? So this is just a calcium pill. So how many tablets do we need to make up 2.7 grams? So we have two questions here. One tablet is a half of a gram. How much is in three and a quarter tablets? So you've got tablet one, tablet two, tablet three, and a quarter, right? Each one of these is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, but this one doesn't have the whole half, right? Because that's only a quarter. So instead of adding 0 0.5 and then whatever that portion is, you can simply multiply 0 0.5 times 3 and 1 quarter. Now, since 3 and 1 quarter is a nice decimal, 3.25, I can go ahead and do it that way, or I can do one half times three and a quarter. Okay, either way, if I want to do it manually. On my calculator, I could use the, the decimal and the fraction mixed together. 0.5 times 3.25 gives me 1.625. And that makes sense, because remember tablet one, 0.5, tablet two, 0.5, tablet three, 0.5. And that quarter tablet that we never figured out, but look, that's 1.5, so there's just a little bit more for that quarter tablet. So that's an answer that makes sense. Now, how many tablets would a person need to take to have 2.7 grams of calcium? So in this case, we've got the total, 2.7. We've got to divide that by the 0 0.5 to figure out how many tablets the person would need. So this time, they would need to take 5.4 tablets. So the first one was 1.625, and the second answer is 5.4. We multiplied in the first case because we don't have a total. We divide in the second case because we already knew the total number of grams, and we need to go backwards. Example number seven. Complete the following invoices for upholstery fabric. Seven and a quarter at $13.35 a yard. 23 and one quarter at $16.22 per yard. And 22 and a third at $4.95 per yard. So you can just use your calculator uh, and the fraction key to do this. So seven and one quarter times 13.35 
gives us $96. Now I'm going to need to round so the nearest cent is 79 cents. 23 and a quarter times 1622 is 377 and 12 cents because it comes out 0.115 and I have to round up that one. 22 and one third yards times 4.95 is 110.55 exactly. Adding these together, 96.79 plus 377.12 plus 110.55, the total for the fabric is going to be $584.46. Example 8. Plumbers deal with measurements in inches and common fractions of an inch, while surveyors use feet and decimal fractions of a foot. Often, one trade needs to interpret the measurements of the other. So here in Part A, we have a drain that has a run of 54 feet at a grade of 1 8 inch per inch. So we've got this 54 feet and it's dropping one eighth of an inch per inch. Now, our problem is 54 feet needs to be in inches because we need our units of the drain and the grade to be the same. So 54 times 12 gives me 648 inches. So the high end of the drain is 126.60 feet elevation. And now they wanna know where the low end of the drain is. What's the elevation after that drop? So we're going to have to multiply 648 times 1 8 and we get 81. So this is how much it dropped, 81 inches. Okay, but they want it in feet, okay? So we've got to divide that by 12, and that's 6.75 feet. So we've got the high end, 126.60, minus the low end, 6.75, and it is at 119.85 feet. So we've changed it back to feet, and they said do it as a decimal, and they did not say, let's see, they didn't tell us what to round to, so we're gonna put 119.85. Now part B, the elevation at one end of a lot is 84.25 feet. So here's our end of the lot, it's at 84.25. The other end is at 98.80, so it's higher up here at 98.80. So the difference in this elevation is 98.80 minus 84.25. So this total drop in elevation is 98.80 minus 84.25 is 14.55 feet. Now they've asked us to do it in feet and inches, and they don't give us the option to use a decimal. To change feet to inches, we multiply by 12. So we've got to take our 0.55 and multiply that by 12. 0.55 times 12 gives me 6.6 .6 inches. So it's 14 feet plus 6.6 .6 inches. So we need to pay attention here before we do this final answer because it says to the nearest 
eighth of an inch. Let's talk about what an eighth of an inch is in decimals. Because see, we've got this 0.6 inches. So one eighth of an inch, one divided by eight, is 0 0.125. Two divided by eight is 0 0.25. Three divided by eight is 0.375. Four divided by eight is 0 0.5. Five divided by eight is 0 0.625. Seven divided by eight is 0 0.875. And of course, eight divided by eight would be a whole inch. Now we have to look and see which one of these is the 6.6 .6 inches closest to, and it's closest to 5 eighths. So the answer they want is the 14 feet and, and 6 and 5 eighths inches. So that's a little tricky there. You have to be sure you always read your instructions.